Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, J.P. Wiggins, who's co-founder and vice president of logistics at 3G TMS. And today we're going to talk about TMS in the food supply chain. Now, transportation management systems, you know, have a lot of, you know, provide a lot of value to companies across all industries. But certainly in the food industry, uh, you know, there's a very strong value proposition there when you consider you know, the cost of transportation as a percent of, of revenue and kind of the service, you know, challenges involved. So, I mean, what, what factors are driving demand for TMS in the food industry today? Uh, are the barriers to implementation coming down? Uh, what are some of the key capabilities, important capabilities that, uh, you know, food companies need to, you know, succeed, you know, today? Well, those are some of the questions we're going to address in today's episode. And, you know, it's great to have JP back in the program to share his insights and advice on this topic. So JP, welcome back. Oh, great, great, great to be back. Uh, thanks for having me again. Great, I think, I think the last time you were on, it was probably a little bit warmer outside than it is uh, you know, these days. So, yeah, uh, we're, we're definitely catching the grunt of the winter right now, so. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So let's go right, right to the topic. I mean, um, w when you look at um, you know, TMS in, in the food industry, I mean, what are some of the key factors or, or trends that are driving um, and making TMS systems more important than ever today for companies in the food industry? Well, I think a lot of it is maybe if you could look at the history of food more than anything, and there's three real particular reasons that I think we've summed up, is that in the past, um, food companies have put so much time and resources into their modernization efforts, uh, modernizing their infrastructure more than anything. So like we've, we've sold a lot to food in this past year and talking to our customers, our customers come back and tell us we never had the resources to do a TMS in the past. Um, but then also a lot of M&A was going on in food. So you end up with multiple ERP systems at your food companies, and that's a very normal right now. And, and a lot of folks were actually, they were hoping to get their TMS needs filled by their ERP provider. So um, that was a real big, uh, you know, push of what happened in the past. So additionally, what's happening lately is that uh, the Food Safety Modernization Act has come out. And, you know, last year that made large businesses comply to it. And there's a lot of temperature control requirements and some safety aspects of that. So that's driving it also. TMS isn't a silver bullet to solve your, your you know, FISMA needs, but it's, it's a great enabler to help solve that puzzle of the, you know, complying with, for compliance for SFMA. But I think the real big reason things are going on in, in food right now is the buying habits of the end consumer are changing very, very rapidly. We've talked endlessly about all the changes in retail. But if you think about it, a lot of those same types of changes are now happening in the food service industries. Um, you know, look at Target. Target bought, what, half a billion dollars they bought, ship it. Um, you've got Hello Fresh. you've got Blue Apron. Um, of course, you've got Amazon Pantry, you know. So the way customers are buying, I mean, I, I was like this morning, I was just sitting here going, oh, wait, I'm almost out of tea. And I'm like, Alexa, order me some tea. Based on JP's order history, <laughs> I found Twining's tea, 24 count. It's ten dollars and thirty nine cents total after two dollars and sixty cents discount. in discounts and credits. Would you like to buy it? Yes. Okay. There. Order so, placed. So, I mean, th that's how people buy now. I mean, it's it's just so easy. And um, so, I think that the changing for the network, and it's basically if you're a three if you're a three PL or you're a direct shipper in the food industry. The whole fulfillment nature has gone, the whole, the whole model, the whole fulfillment structure is just, it's completely being turned upside down. Yeah, that's a great, you, you know, that's a great example. I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I have these earbuds on and the, the vol, you know, the volume is not being picked up by my uh, Amazon Echo because otherwise I would be ordering, you know, tea as well. Yeah. Um, but, but you're right. I mean, I think, um, you know, when you see, um, you know, what's happening from a service standpoint in the food industry and the different fulfillment models that are going on now and, you know, your, your case study example there, you know, just ordering it online, uh, you know, with your voice command via Amazon uh, is, a, is a great example. And then I think, you know, I think it was just in the Wall Street Journal uh, this past week, you know, talking about all the M&A activity in the food industry and just the, the, the challenges that are going on there, you know, between, uh, again, consumer uh, buying behaviors, kind of uh, companies uh, or consumers looking to fresh food more often uh, than kind of packaged goods. So there's a lot of, you know, cost pressures that are driving, you know, M&A activity. And then that trickles down from an IT standpoint, like you yep. said, you know, ERP rationalization standpoint, network rational, rationalization uh, endeavors, everything else. And it seemed like TMS, you know, in some cases kind of fell by the, you know, by the wayside. 
Um, you know, like, like I said in my opening remarks, I mean, again, when you look at the value proposition of TMS because of, you know, the, the, the cost of transportation as a percent of revenue is, is relatively high, um, you know, there's a strong value proposition there, but, you know, there's still a lot of companies in the food industry that don't have, you know, a, a TMS. Is, is it just because they've been busy with, other, with, with these other projects and other endeavors or are there other factors at play here? Um, if uh, at, at 3G, we, uh, we sell a lot into the 3PL market. Um, uh, but in our shipper market, by far, food has been the most uh, interesting sector where we've closed more business there than any other sector uh, from the, what you would call the shipper's perspective. And um, a lot of the customers, we, we do have both shippers and 3PLs that specialize in food. I think um, from a shipper perspective, it's not outsourced as much as maybe other industries, as a lot of other industries completely outsourced, like maybe 80, 90% of the companies there are outsourced to a 3PL. Food industry, it seems to be a little bit more of a 50-50 split. Um, but what we do see is that um, if they are going to compete in this modern market, um, you know, these shippers are, you know, these food companies are realizing that they have to have state of the art. Um, and if they don't have state of the art, that's what they're going to look for their 3PL. They're going to look for their 3PL to have state of the art because um, the game has completely changed. Uh, the routing patterns are changing. Uh, you know, like it used to be fine to manage with uh, Excel spreadsheets and your ERP. You used to be able to get by because you were doing simple order patterns. You know, I'm buying on scheduled routines. My customers bought the same truckload once every other week, or they made the same order delivery once a month. And, you know, you would just get into that standard pattern. And it's easy to route and execute in that environment. But now with these changing fulfillment patterns, all your customers are ordering faster. They're expecting faster delivery times. They're expecting Amazon-like service, for gosh sakes. And they're ordering more frequently in, in smaller quantities. So that makes your, uh, your need for transportation execution, it, it goes up exponentially because now all of a sudden, instead of delivering full truckload orders, now you're delivering a lot more LTL. Maybe you're building multi-stop truckloads and you should really look at pool distribution. Um, and that's, that's, that's a lot why our customers come to us, that pool distribution, especially with, uh, we have a new feature which we call um, continuous pool optimization, which allows a, uh, to optimize to a pool point, even if you don't have all the freight. You know, like it's Tuesday and you're shipping to a pool point, but that pool point is a collection location. It'll hold for two, it'll hold for two or three days. And so you'll keep shipping to that same pool point until you have full quantities to deliver outbound from it. So it's continuous pool optimization. And, you know, it gets complex. There's no way to do that manually. And, and so the, the, that's what we're seeing is that the, the need, it's, it's now almost, almost a requirement now. If you're delivering based on what your customers, if you're a food customer, if you're a food manufacturer, food distributor, or food 3PL, the end customer here, the people that are buying the freight, or their, their patterns are just drastically changing. Right, right. Now, are you seeing, you know, you know, historically some of the the, the barriers to implementation where either you didn't, you know, either the cost was too high to implement a TMS, or they didn't have the IT resources or the the, the team in place to do it. I mean, are you seeing some of those barriers, to, you know, start to come down in terms of, you, you know, know the, uh, being right, able to implement TMSs more yeah. more effectively now? You know, by far one of the largest challenge in food has always been integration. Um, and especially now combined with the M&A aspect where you may have three or four or more ERPs. You know, we've got customers that they'll have three different versions of SAP, a couple different versions of JDA, and, a, and, and then another company bought has some, you know, Microsoft Dynamics stuff. And they've, they've never put them on one standard ERP. It's just they keep them all separately. But yet they want to operate as one customer, and, excuse me, they want to operate as one company and look like one company to their end customers. So integration with, is a big piece of this. And um, so that's why we have middleware. You know, it's one of the big things that we get with is we have a middleware that's attached to our 3G TMS system. So that we're able to integrate to those multiple ERPs. Um, and and the, the other big one, though, is we don't know how this industry is going to fall out. I mean, it's we're in the middle of rapidly uh, changing industry. And, uh, you know, if, if I'd love to see someone tell me what's going to happen to this industry, what it's going to look like in two years, because quite frankly, I don't think anyone really knows. But all I know for sure, and what we do know for sure, is that it is going to be drastically different than it is today. So uh, whatever you buy today, and this is another key to success, is you gotta have something that's gonna be configurable, changeable, something that you, the end user of the software, can configure yourself, write your own business rules and logic, and change the system around and keep it in tune because your business rules are gonna change. They're gonna change monthly from the next couple of years. Yeah, no, those are great points. And I think that's why, I mean, I think you're seeing, you know, from a technology standpoint, you know, particularly within the TMS is, uh, you know, number one, the, the approach to integration kind of being different today than it was, was in the past to make it much more, 
um, you know, configurable, make it much, you know, quicker to implement. You got to do it in a couple of weeks to integrate, you know, literally two weeks. No, right. You can't right. spend three, six, eight, you know, sometimes a year plus integrating a SAP or something like that. You got to be able to do it in two weeks, you know, or two days even. So, yeah, I mean, I think that that's, that's been kind of the, 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 the challenge and the demand from the market really is, is to really, you know, innovate on that, that end of, uh, of things. And then to, to your other point is, you know, the ability to, you know, empower the end user, if you will, mm -hmm. with the ability to innovate, the ability to configure, the ability to, to um, you know, adapt to whatever changes are, are happening again in a more in a more timely in a, in a more timely manner. So I certainly seen those things, you know, in the marketplace that kind of lowering the barrier to, to implementation, if you will, or or making the, the business case even even stronger. And, you know, and talking about the business case, like I mentioned, I mean, certainly cost savings is is. is almost always the main, you know, cost, just, you know, the, the main justification or the business case for implementing a TMS. Um, but, but are there other, you know, factors driving an adoption today? Well, um, you know, if, when a, when a, when a food manufacturer distributor was shipping full truckloads and they put in the TMS, eh, you know, TMS would have some great customer service aspects, but it's not really going to save money. Once you start having to deliver more of these complex patterns where you're looking to optimize, where you're looking to consolidate freight, where you're looking to build stops and use pool, that's when a TMS really starts to shine because uh, we've proven this time and time again, we can generally save well over 10%, 10% plus is kind of the standard. Uh, you'll save on your actual transportation execution costs with improvements in customer service. So, I mean, it gives you a rallying point to leverage behind, well, where's my freight? When did it ship? Who's the carrier? Where's it at right now kind of thing. That's what your TMS helps you do. So it allows you to improve your customer service while saving 10%. So, uh, for most of our customers, it's been a pretty easy sale at the, let's call it the, you know, the CXO level, whether it's a CFO, CIO, or CEO, that's actually the end buyer here that's signing off on it. It's usually a pretty good business case to, to justify a TMS now. Yeah, you know, one, one of the things that I, I've seen is, you know, the, the cost is always going to be part of the business, you know, the business case, right? Because that's, that's always going to be the, the dollars and cents, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think what, what I'm beginning to see, not only in TMS, but even in other applications as well, is... How is this gonna? How is this investment gonna help us with uh, improving our customer experience or customer service? Because that's becoming another uh, competitive differentiation front, or yeah. the ability to maintain or capture market share from the competition, right? I think we all, you know, again, again, what we've seen in the in the consumer realm, right, with two day shipping or you know next day shipping and, and visibility and predictability yeah. and all that that's all kind of showing up in the B2B world as well, where yeah, exactly. if you're able to meet that delivery requirement, when you said you were, you're going to be able to provide that visibility. Those are all things that are going to enhance the customer experience. And that becomes another justification factor for a TMS. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, I think we've already, you know, touched upon this a little bit, um, but, but if you had to, you know, when you, when you talk to companies in the food industry, I mean, 3PLs that are serving, you know, customers in food, I mean, which, which TMS capabilities are, kind of bubbling up to the top. I mean, are, are the ones that are becoming the most important today for companies in this industry to achieve the you know maximum cost and service benefits? Yeah, aside from, like I said, integration is really hands down one of the failure points for TMS projects in food um, because of the complexities requiring of dealing with multiple ERPs and just making it simple. You got to integrate with your trading partners, your ERPs. Um, the big one that bubbles up is optimization. I touched on this a little bit, but optimization is a, is a key, which is being able to look out into history look out into the future, excuse me, and, you know, how do I better consolidate? How do I better route? What carrier should I be using? You know, even, even bringing in some light brokerage, there's no problem, no issue with bringing in light brokerage because if you have some lanes that you don't have contract carriers, bring in some brokerage abilities. Um, so being able to do brokerage in with your TMS, you know, so uh, by, that's the two, some of the bigger ones by far also still is that self-service, self-configuration. The people that are buying us now, they know their world is changing. It's and they don't know how it's going to land or how it's going to work out, but they just know that it's going to change. And they got to be able to write their own portals, change their fields, change their own workflow, being able to change what their users do and, and how to actually process freight and to be automated. And and and, and then if you're at the CXO level, um, they're worried about that customer service aspect. You know, how do I improve my customer experience? My customers are demanding. I'm going to use it again, that Amazon type of information. You know, like if you're a consumer of Amazon, you know where your freight is all the time. Well, businesses want to know where their freight is all the time. They don't want to, they, they want to, they want to be able to like have APIs or automatic portals to be able to find things when it's important to them. So, you know, I guess that's it. I mean, the other is as simple. No one wants to do anything complicated anymore. They, they, this, the world is complicated enough. They don't want to buy a system that's going to be complicated, you know, so they, they got to make it simple. So 
that seemed to be the, some of the big needs is, you know, just simplification of this complex process. You know, it's interesting that you, you bring up optimization and, and, you know, I think historically, um, and, and this is true in food and, and in some other industries, a lot of companies would say, well, you know, I really don't need optimization, right? Because I, I do full truckload, mm -hmm. you know, I, I ship out once or twice a week. It's pretty predictable, like you said, you know, early on. You know, you fast forward to today and it's it, optimization has really become much more critical because it, it's not that predictable full truckload cadence yeah. that they were accustomed in the past. Now you, you know, you're talking about, like you said, you know, dealing with pool points, multi-stop, you know, smaller shipments, more frequent shipments. And unless they're able to do that in a much more optimized or intelligent way and kind of leverage technology to do that, you know, their costs can quickly get out of hand. And, and yep. just as importantly, their service levels can go, you know, south pretty quickly as well. Yeah, I guess I use it. One of the litmus tests I use is, is like a lot of our clients right now, they were using routing guides, which they slapped into their ERP. And, and when their execution environment got more complicated than could be handled by just routing guides out of your ERP, that's really when you need to look for a TMS. Great, great. Yeah, I think that's a great, uh, great, uh, you know, rule of thumb there. Uh, you know, JP, we're running, you know, short on time here. So I'm just gonna go right to my last question here. I mean, as a way to wrap up, I mean, if I'm a, you know, a logistics or a transportation executive and, and, you know, at a food company, and I, you know, I have the opportunity, I've got five minutes with my CFO or CEO, and, and, uh, you know, I have to make the case for, you know, implementing a TMS. I mean, what, what, what are some of the key things I should emphasize in that conversation? Yeah, well, the, the modern success stories in food, and this is what the case studies we're coming out with are, is that you'll improve customer service and save 10%. I mean, that's really, look, we're going to improve the customer delivery experience because food, more than most industries, it's one of the top five, I think. Uh, the delivery aspect of food is an important, critical aspect of the overall business. It's not like CPG where you can turn over the fulfillment to anybody else. Your delivery to your customers is, is part of what they're buying. That's why they're buying from you most of the time anyway, in most food. So improving customer experience is important, improving customer service, and then improving that whole aspect of delivery while saving 10%. I mean, that's generally what gets the, you know, gets, and then you'll usually say, well, let's, get, let's take it a little further, but that's usually, it. that's enough to get a project started. Yeah, and no, absolutely. I mean, I think if you bring no. up if you bring up those two points, I think you will immediately grab grab yeah. their attention. I'll, they'll say, "Yo, well, tell me more, or let, let's get uh, let's get some more details here to see how we can you know get this going." Exactly. Well, JP, I think um, you, you know certainly, uh, like you said, you know, this is an industry that's evolving and changing, you know, very quickly. So it'll be interesting to see. It really is. It'll be interesting to see where we are. You know, we're in January now. It'll be interesting to see where we are in, in December. Maybe we'll come back in December and perfect kind of touch touch base on this topic again, but. Uh, again, thank you for, uh, you know, making the time and, uh, and, you know, like I always say, we always manage to just scratch the surface on this topic, but I think we hit some high points and some, some good words of advice. So thank you. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Uh, I want to thank those of you that joined us. Uh, if you're watching this episode on demand, either at the 3G TMS website or on Talking Logistics, and you've got a question or a comment for JP, uh, you can post it there and I'm sure that he'll be, he'll be more than happy to respond via that medium. Again, thank you all for joining us and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a great day.